Jesse Guardiola is the Hispanic Relations Officer with the Tulsa Police Department and is our guest for this segment. Jesse, welcome. It's good to see you again. Thank you for having me, Sam. What's it been, a year? I think, yeah, I believe so. Roughly? Yes, sir. Time flies. Hispanic law enforcement, is it a problem? You shared with me last time we talked how a lot of Hispanics who are new to this part of the country are really hesitant to talk to or be around law enforcement officials. First, why is that? Well, you have, it's a complex problem. Um, you have issues of cultural misunderstanding. Uh, for example, uh, you have police departments in Mexico, Latin America, that aren't really considered a public service, more of an entrepreneurship, if you will. Uh, these police departments function either working for cartels um, or uh, have made money off the working poor in these countries uh, by doing some sort of toll or, or uh, charge on them every time they encountered them. So we make the assumption as Americans that that culture or the issues and the conditioning that this community has had is going to stop at the border. And it doesn't. They, they bring those prejudice or the uncertainty uh, with them when they come to the U.S. So then there's that. You have that layer. And then you have the issue uh, right now in the, the national politics, uh, the polarizing politics oh, that you good see. Oh, Lord, yes. So there is a fear of law enforcement getting involved in the deportation process. So they, they don't understand you may be showing up there to solve the issue of the robbery, but certain Hispanics show, see you showing up to their home and they don't see, let's talk about the robbery. No, they see maybe they want to know my, uh, my status in this country, so they don't want to open the door. Mm -hmm. And then you have the children who are U.S. citizens. The Pew uh, Research Center said 90%, which that's true for Tulsa as well, we're at 89 percent are U.S. citizens of, uh, that are here in the, uh, born here in the United States to immigrant parents. So you have 90 percent of these kids that are U.S. citizens, but their parents are either undocumented or are going through the process in some way, shape, or form. The fear of them losing their parents because of where the politics are right now with the immigration debate. Mm -hmm. So there is that bias already against us. There's that fear that we're not there to really help them. Uh, there's a language barrier. So there's a huge lack um, in confidence that we're there to provide a service and we're there to help them uh, to deal with their emergency needs. You know, Jesse, I have heard tell that a lot of Hispanic students, and I mean a lot of them, are afraid to excel in sports, football, soccer, baseball, uh, because they don't want to draw attention to their family. I've heard that uh, several, there have been several reports made of youngsters that just want to maintain average grades rather than higher grades because they don't want to draw attention to themselves. These youngsters are playing on an uneven field here. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, to your point, um, in a lot of these kids too, uh, what I like to call just the extreme survivors because those that do excel in athletics, those that do excel in the academic um, arenas, um, they do it uh, without the help of their parents. Mm -hmm. um, at some point, their parents' education stops. For a case in point, my parents. My parents both had a third grade education from Mexico. So the minute I graduated into the fourth grade, I already had more education than, than both of my parents. And that's the same for a lot of these kids because uh, as you see and as many people uh, have seen, the people that come from another country, uh, unless they're coming as re uh, refugees, uh, political asylum, most come out of poverty. Most come because their socioeconomic situation in the country they're coming from uh, is worse. Uh, and they believe that coming here gives them the best opportunity um, to raise a family, to uh, just have a life, as they say, chase the American dream. I read a quote recently that says that they come here for the jobs, the immigrants, but they dream of their children having a middle class. Mm -hmm. So 
most of these kids don't have mom and dad to help them with their homework, uh, to help them acculturate, assimilate to the American way of life because, again, they're immigrants or they don't understand how to do that. You know what's interesting, too, is there was a period of time between World War I and World War II when Italians, Poles, Jews, Russians who were immigrants to this country were going through the same thing. That's right. Now, well, let me, let me go back to that too. The only jobs they could snare were jobs that non-immigrants didn't want to do or wouldn't be caught doing. And yet the same cry went up, well, they're taking our jobs. No. And it's happening again. History has a way of repeating itself, doesn't it? Well, even at that time, you had the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. So there were jobs where they could get in and help them become assimilated to the American way of life. You don't have that anymore. So it's harder for them to figure out a way to acculturate, to, to be part of community. And it is true in what you're saying. It's a, it's a much difficult um, process. And yet, because we don't have a way of getting to know each other, then therefore we start blaming each other for what they think they're doing, in this case, taking their jobs from them. In the years since you and I have talked, are you pleased with progress here? Are you disappointed in progress or lack of it? What, what's going on with you now? I would say both. Um, you have people that uh, understand that they need to be part of the solution. How do I help these kids acculturate, assimilate, so that they can become successful? Because we're now treating them as part of this country. They are American, so how do I help them succeed? Um, but then you also have uh, the rhetoric that you see in our mm -hmm. political debates. So you have others that are upset, and um, it's an us against them mindset. So you will have those people that want no part uh, or they're, they're, they fall back into the xenophobia uh, issue. Or, again, the other side of it is, okay, how do I help them become a productive American citizen? So it's, you have a polarized audience, and I find that some people are more engaged to help them, and then others like, okay, they're the problem, and you're just helping fan the flames. Recently, I attended a concert involving uh, a program that was brought here through a, an organization known as Sistema, through Boston Avenue Methodist Church. The people that played for us in this concert, four of them, they played Carnegie Hall, London Pops, the New York Phil, they played all the big ones just in this country. That's not counting the big ones overseas. They were Hispanic, they were Latino, and they, the, 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 this church has started an incredible program for young folk, particularly with emphasis on Latinos and Hispanics, and it's taken off. And these men played this concert and gave those kids something to reach for. It was the most amazing thing to watch these youngsters later. It's letting them see what it looks like uh, to chase your dream in whatever talent you've been mm -hmm. blessed with. Um, and that's one thing that I, when I'm mentoring Hispanic youth, um, one of the aspects that we do in recruiting now is we, we, we go to Hispanic serving institutions on the short term. Long term is we now are spending time in middle schools. And when you're in middle schools, you're mentoring kind of a macro perspective of explaining to them there are different venues and ways to survive. It just depends on what it is that you see that you can contribute, whether it's a musician, whether it's art, whether it's law enforcement, whatever you find a heart for. But the key to that is staying in school. And this is what I explained to them, because quitting is not going to give you what you dream about. It's just going to make it a lot harder. Uh, on you and your family. So it's setting, setting them up and saying that education is the route to ultimately what you want to do. Bingo. Glad to hear you say that. Jesse, we're out of time. Thank you, my friend, for coming by. I appreciate and it, sir. Check back with me in a year. Let's see how we're doing, okay? I look forward to it, as all always. Right. Short break. We're going to come back and talk about angel flight and how it all got started in this part of the woods. We'll be back right after this.